Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to see how I got from this to this in about a year and a half. <laughs> but we finally made it. The story begins about a year before the table actually started when I found these two slabs over in Alabama at the 127 yard sale. I'll put the link below to the yard sale. It's a pretty good place. It's the world's largest yard sale. Anyway, I uh, found these two slabs, a friend of mine at work put them together for me, and I decided to turn these two slabs into a bar. And that's where this whole thing began. So I built this bar purely by the seat of the pants. I had a few ideas that I derived from the internet, put them together, and came up with this. It gave me the confidence that I needed um, for the next year when I decided to build the matching table, which I thought, after a while, that I may have bit off a little bit more than I could chew. So here's the two slabs that we purchased over in Alabama a year later at the 127 yard sale. These slabs were freshly cut so I had to let them set for about eight or nine months until the uh, humidity level was down to about 12 percent. So it's about as dry as it's going to get here in Georgia being dried in my garage in the open air without going to a kiln and having it kiln dried which I probably should have done when I, later on when I started to have issues. But uh, yeah, that's, that's as good as it's going to get. I put some anchor seal on the ends to keep it from checking, and that seemed to work out really good. So the day rolls around, and it's time to join the slabs together. I don't have much video or pictures on this process, but if anybody has any questions on what I use to join them together, I'll be happy to give you the information. It wasn't too difficult, actually. Um, I'm really pleased with the way that joined together. So I used half inch dowels to join it together and clamped it up. I used a jig to drill out for the dowels that's actually made for 4x4 posts. And man, it worked out perfect. I'm really happy with the result from it. Here it is after we removed the clamps. Turned out pretty good. So cedar has a tendency to have punk wood, which is like a spongy, corkish type wood that runs along the grain of the tree. And this one had quite a bit of it. So I decided to chisel it all out and I'm going to fill it in with colored epoxy, which would give it a really nice effect. On the bottom side, I used uh, colored epoxy, but then I decided to get some quick set epoxy with a filler in order to make it a little bit sturdier. Since it did have a lot of punk wood on it, I was afraid that chiseling it all out would actually weaken the slab. So here I have the bottom of the table all taped up with aluminum duct tape. Works really good for sealing up the cracks and crevices where the epoxy might flow through. I flip it over to the top side and start filling in with the colored epoxy. Below I'll put stone coat countertops epoxies that I use for the process. I use Cafe Metallic and it took several attempts. I would come back 30 minutes later and half the epoxy would have drained through into the wood. There were several hollow voids within the cedar slab which just ate up epoxy. It took me about almost a half a gallon of epoxy to do the top and the bottom side. Then um, later on, uh, you'll see where I started using the uh, clear epoxy with a filler to reinforce it to make it stronger on the bottom side. So here I'm making a jig for my router to use on the sled. I used, kind of looked over several different ideas on the internet and I came up with this idea the most. Um, I figured, one, it's pretty easy to make. Two, I figured I was going to use it only one time. And uh, I didn't want to do anything too permanent. But uh, actually it turned out really well. I had to tweak it a little bit on the ends to get it to straighten out level to make sure that it maintained its levelness from one extreme corner to the other. And that was just a matter of loosening and tightening the screws and adding some reinforcement on the ends. But it, yeah, it turned out really good. I'm, I was happy with it. So this is a good time to point out that I had to use four low saw horses. These saw horses have the fold out brackets in order to place a two by four or six in this case, upright on its side so that uh, you can use it as a rail for a sled. I had to use four of them since this table was so wide, but they worked out really good. After a lot of shimming and a lot of leveling, it turned out perfect. I was really happy with the way it worked.
you can see here, this makes a pretty big mess in your garage or your shop. So be prepared for sawdust to be everywhere. Luckily, since this is cedar, um, it was red sawdust. So it wasn't hard to figure out where it was, but I'm still a year later cleaning sawdust in my garage from this. All right, so the top side's done. Flip it over and let's do the bottom side. Quickly began to realize that I was gonna to have to take quite a bit of material off this table, as you can see from the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, yeah, it turned out to be a lot thinner slab than I wanted it to be, but that was the only thing I could do to get it perfectly flat. And I had to run quite a few passes on the uh, bottom side in order to get it perfectly flat. But uh, that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. I didn't want a twisted table. All right, my router planing's done. Looks pretty good, but as you can see, I exposed a lot more voids in the wood. So I'm gonna have some more epoxy filling to do. So it's just a process of filling and sanding, filling and sanding until finally you get it to the point to where all your voids are filled in. So here I am putting in half inch bar stock, epoxying it in, using a router to route out slots for it. I did this as a preventive measure to keep it from bowing. I don't know how effective it is. I probably should have done it a little bit differently. I should have actually inset the screws in those and screwed it to the table before epoxying it. But uh, it is what it is. I, the table did start to bow on me a little bit later, but that was because I was uh, real slow between the time that I sealed the bottom and then flipped it over it started to dry quicker on the top which caused it to start to bow and I had to quickly build the base to prevent that so I go out to my garage one day and I put a flat edge on the table and I noticed it was bowing a little bit yeah that really motivated me to go out and buy my wood to build my base but the problem is the western red cedar that I bought was not dry enough so I had to put it in the garage I had to put a dehumidifier in there just try to dry it down as much as I could not opening the garage door it was summertime and I was dumping a lot of water out of that room and believe me in about I think about six weeks it dried it down enough to where I could use it now if you look closely here at that middle base four by six you can see a crack it's superficial but I didn't want to lose the wood so I went ahead and just filled those cracks in with epoxy sanded them down and it looked really fine and it's going to be up underneath the table it didn't hurt the structure of the table but I just didn't want to lose that piece of wood so I built this trussle base in a way that I could take the legs off and move the table that way if I ever moved or ever changed tables it wouldn't be so difficult to remove from my dining room and uh, also it gave it stability to the bottom side of the table let me just say this was a happy day to finally get the base in the dining room and the tabletop attached to it was a great feat because that was a pretty long time to get to this point so here I am with everything in the dining room in a more stable environment that's air-conditioned and I can get it ready for uh, for when the day comes I'm going to epoxy I think I let it set here for about a month and a half I used the clear satin armor seal coat for the bottom in three coats just to give it a natural look and to provide protection for the uh, for the base so the day comes when I finally start epoxying I figured I would start out on the bar since that was the smallest thing to tackle now, I'm not going to go over the whole epoxy deal stone coat countertops has a lot of instructional videos on how to do it and I'm certainly not the person to be telling anybody how to do a, an epoxy coat but the basic breakdown is is you do three seal coats you sand in between each seal coat and a seal coat is what I'm doing right here and I just squeegee it on and uh, squeegee as thin as possible which is probably a little bit too thick the way I did it I should have 
made it a little bit thinner when I seal coated it. The bar turned out really good. The table, if you're in just the right light and you know what you're looking at, you can tell that there are depth changes in the seal coat. That um, that bothers me. Probably nobody else notices it, but you know I'm a perfectionist. That's part of my problem with doing this. It, why it takes me so long. And uh, yeah, so it turned out I'm really satisfied actually with the way it turned out. I can't complain. But it was hot. I had to plastic off the whole room so there'd be no airflow, so no bugs or no dust or anything would settle on it in between coats. I closed off the uh, air conditioning vent. As a matter of fact, I think I turned the air conditioning off downstairs, which made it even hotter. It was September. My wife was out of town, so it was just me uh, when I did the flow coat. My wife was there for the beginning when we were doing the seal coats. The seal coats are not as critical. But the flood coat, you definitely cannot have any airflow, anybody opening and closing doors, um, or anything like that. Anything that would cause any type of dust or bugs or flies or anything to stick to it. Now right here you can see that after you do a seal coat and after the flood coat, you have to pass at least two or three times with a torch to get all the bubbles out of the epoxy. All the air bubbles, that is. And uh, it's pretty neat to do it. Uh, it comes out really good you're like oh this can't work boy those bubbles just rise to the top and pop uh it's really enjoyable actually it's like it's almost like popping a uh, uh, bubble wrap with a torch but uh yeah it turned out like i said really well it's a lot of work you can see i have the room all plastic off here and uh <laughs> it uh it was a it was a job let me tell you So here's the tabletop after its first seal coat. As you can tell, it looks fairly rough. You can see there are dry spots on the table. Yeah, that's normal. Uh, that's why you do three seal coats. And after third, the third seal coat, if you have these uh, stubborn places that won't fill in all the way, they have little dimples, you can use uh, filler sticks uh, to seal those in. And actually, uh, I did use a filler stick to uh, fill in about five or six places that had dimples that uh, were being stubborn but uh, turned out pretty good so here it is the flood coats are done after three seal coats I've achieved what I think is probably the best I can do for my ability. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The great thing about this situ this day was that I was traveling that night and I was gonna be out of town for a week. So that means the room was gonna be closed off for one week with no airflow, nobody entering the house, the air conditioner turned off. That'll give plenty of time for the uh, epoxy to start curing and uh, hopefully nothing will stick to it. So we get back from our trip and the table's done. Of course, this is after I clean the room a little bit, but the epoxy is hard enough to where I don't have to worry about anything sticking to it. That was the big thing. And uh, yeah, I'm really satisfied with the way it looks. Here, my next one would be more perfect. Uh, I learned a lot on this table. I learned a lot in the epoxy process. And it's something that you just have to do over and over again to get good at. That's here to show you how the epoxy turned out. Now this is the colored coffee metallic epoxy that I used to fill in the voids. You can see how the uh, flood coat really brings out the brilliance in that epoxy. Really happy with the way it turned out. All in all, I'm really satisfied with the table and here it is with some chairs that we purchased. Perfectly uh, matched up to the table and uh, this wasn't planned but the, the table legs perfectly worked between the seats. And, uh, the finished product turned out exactly like we wanted it to. Hope this video didn't turn out too long. 
And uh, if you like the video, please subscribe below and become a part of the channel. Hopefully I'll have some more videos coming up pretty soon, some more projects. And again, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please hit like and subscribe, like I said before, and uh, become a part of this channel. We'll get some more projects out here going pretty soon.